We've had uh, across all uh, age groups, we have some 3% of folks, at adults, participated in the gig economy. Uh, even among seniors, we see pretty high participation. You mentioned 1%. 400,000 seniors are either performing tasks on the gig economy or selling products, uh, uh, renting uh, rooms in their house. And that's a pretty meaningful number in its own right, but it's growing at a pretty fast rate. You say um, that they're earning, in your words, non-trivial amounts of money. Can you characterize it in another way? Give sure. us an idea of exactly well, what kind I'll of give, dollars I'll we're talking give you a about. Sense. Sure. Traditionally, um, seniors have earned most of their income from Social Security or other forms of annuities that come through, and that's been majority of their income. Today, they're earning as much as 30 percent. For those who participate in the gig economy, as much as 30 percent of their income is coming from these platforms, and that's quite meaningful. Um, uh, for the rest of the, say, young people who participate even more than seniors do, by and large, they only have about 25 percent of their income coming from the economy. So it's a meaningful part. It's a growing part. And it's a good thing in the sense that they're able to rely on this income. They have more spending power. But it does have a bit of a shadow to it because Social Security and other annuities, by and large, are very stable forms of income. Once you start introducing more labor income, uh, as younger people tend to have, seniors are starting to see some of the volatility in mm -hmm. income that is characterized by, for most people. And, and that's a new phenomenon, and I think there are opportunities to help seniors manage that volatility uh, even as they have higher income because they not now are participating in the gig economy. Help me understand why, why this is, is happening. Are, are seniors, are, are they spending more so they, they need to keep up with the pace of their lifestyle while also saving less just because, you know, obviously with savers, we all know what's happened to savers under the, um, you know, this low interest rate environment that we've been in for, for the last, you know, eight or nine years. Well, it's a bit of a paradox. I would say the first answer to why is this happening is we have older people. We have 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 every year. These days, that's a pretty healthy population. They want to work. They want to stay engaged. And maybe not in a full-time capacity, not in a traditional job, but this offers them the opportunity to participate in society actively on their own terms and only as much as they want. That's part of the answer. I think the other part is that there's a lot of economic anxiety around uh, retirement around the future and so despite the fact that we see seniors earning more income on the economy in the on the online economy uh, they're not spending more they're actually spending at a slower rate than they have been spending in the past and um, and in large part uh, that is probably because they're starting to think about need to uh, plan for retirement but there have been other factors that probably have contributed to the slowdown uh, as you know in the last year uh, Social Security has not received the uh, cost of living increases that it has in the past. So people see that as, uh, as a concern and therefore less willing to spend. Uh, seniors did not get the same uh, sale and uh, wind in their sales from the lower gas prices because by and large they don't spend as much uh, on gas. Uh, so they didn't get that boost that other age groups got to a higher degree. And as a general rule, the stock market hasn't done as well this year as it has in the past five years. So that tends to slow down uh, spending for those people who have uh, stock in their portfolio. Can, uh, can, all these can, things um, are interesting because you do mm -hmm. see more participation, more income, but not necessarily more spending associated uh, for people over 65. You, you do say that, that income among this group can, can be more volatile, which averages, I see, 20 percent month to month. Can you explain that? Sure. As I mentioned, um, for most people, young people, adults uh, in general, uh, most of their income comes from labor. And so you have high degrees of volatility that come from different hours work, bonuses at the end of the year, you know, different um, deductions. And, and most people who rely primarily on labor income have even higher levels of volatility. Now, traditionally, older people have had lower volatility. Uh, because most of their income is not from labor, it's from more stable sources like Social Security or other annuities that, that are monthly, same amount uh, uh, paid out. Uh, now, as more older people start working in the labor economy that has a higher degree of volatility, they'll start seeing volatility more akin to what younger adults uh, typically see. Uh, but it's a double-edged sword because they do have more income. It's just less stable income, and people don't always plan all that well for that. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. 
Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the I right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.